Today we're going to be doing some troubleshooting. Also, we're going to be doing some educational on this. Uh, I believe we have an old YouTube video, but the sound's not that good, so a lot of people ask us to redo this. So uh, that's what this is today. So the first thing we're going to do is show you is mess ups. And we actually just hung this on the tree. And we want to show you that we make mistakes too. So this is just to help you so you don't make the same mistakes we make with our own products that we created. So first things first, before you hang this on a tree or on a post, tree bracket comes with it, as you can see, is, you see where the latch is? It's against the tree. You can't open it. So before you hang this unit, always make sure the latch is in front to where you can take the lid on and off to fill the corn. So that's mistake number one <laughs> for today. Troubleshooting number two. Now that we've fixed the first problem, the latch on the front, please do not put sticks in the door. Coons will take these out quicker than a cat can lick his behind. Make sure you put a lock. Some type of locking device to where your bear, your coon, hogs, anything bumping up against that or fiddling with it is not going to open it up. Because we have put sticks in these when we didn't have these and paid for it dearly later when we found our timer all hanging out. So, that's number two. Next thing we're going to discuss in the troubleshooting is what type of battery, I hear that all the time, what type of battery do I put in my feeder? Well, it's not a 6 volt battery. It's the only thing we tell people, do not put a 6 volt, uh, six volt in here. Well, what kind of 12 volt do I run? It is completely and entirely up to you. You can run the new OAD battery we have you can run your lawnmower sea dew battery just to let you know how long roughly these will run oad battery we're suspecting 10 to 12 months usually on your lawnmower batteries and such you usually get about six to eight months your timer which of course comes with it your next step down, your bigger 12 volt battery, this should usually last you about, about six to eight months. Or your standard size. You pick what you want to put in there, it'll run it. Next thing we want to troubleshoot is properly securing your unit. Uh, these are the people who have large bear and large hogs. You've got a car to keep in right here. Once the unit goes into the bracket, make sure you put your pin in this. This keeps the bear or the hogs from pushing the unit up and not allowing it to come off the bracket. All right, another thing, once again, we're talking about large bear, large hogs, is strapping it to the tree. We recommend a minimum of two straps. You can do it with one, but this is the way we do it. If your straps are long enough, secure it in here. Make sure you put your pin to where they can't lift it off. Wrap your strap around and then do your bottom leg right here. You notice this pad comes out, which when you put the strap here and around the leg and you cinch it, it locks it in place. The reason why you want to do this is the fact that once the bear starts twisting on this thing, you don't want it to twist on your bracket. We've had several actually get it off the tree and uh, tear these things in two if we just put one strap. We just go find the feeder. Your battery shorted out because it hit you know the 18 gauge metal. Put your new battery in, put it back on the tree, and then let it go again. Almost last but not least is your locking mechanism on your lid. We've had several bear that actually clawed it this long enough to where they popped this open and they were able to get into the corn. What you do is once you secure this thing, 
You latch down, put you a piece of wire or a pin in there. And that keeps him from scratching at it and lifting it up. Another question we're asked, and we hate to even discuss this, but we have sometimes what's called sticky fingers in the woods. A lot of people ask, well, if I'm gonna spend the money on this unit, how do I secure it to where the two-legged animals don't walk off with it? Well, first of all, you're gonna need one of these. But what we've done in each of the pads is we've drilled holes, and these are welded to the unit. You take your either a cable or a chain, wrap it around your tree, around your lock, and lock it in. Well, we've had hunters before that called us and said that you can also place this unit on the ground. They've taken the holes, they've placed this unit in cutovers yeah, in the middle of absolutely no timber where they had hog and bear problem. And they took lag bolts and screws and screwed them into the stumps. Also used them to where they took big rods in the middle of uh, food plots and drove it into the ground. A lot of problems of hogs are in Texas and Y'all don't have very many big trees way out west. Well, a couple of y'all got together and thought of the plywood, meaning take you a sheet of plywood, minimum five, four by five, and place your unit on the plywood, and you take washers, put it on the wood, bolt it to the plywood, and the hogs stand on the unit, on the plywood, while they try to knock the unit over and it's secure. Same thing with cows. They're standing on the plywood and they're unable to knock it off. Like we said, this is one of the most versatile feeders on the market. Comes with your tree bracket. You can hang it on the tree, hang it on the fence post. You know, you can put it on the ground, you can put it on the stumps, you can put it on a piece of plywood. And we tell people this that do not have, again, bear and hog problems. If you have just a coon problem, this is the way to go. But if you do it with a coon, I mean, with a bear or a hog, they're gonna tip it over. Each of these legs are hollow which allows you to put a leg underneath it. And what that enables you to do is if you have tall grass and you just want to pick it up a little bit to throw it out, that's what it's for. But uh, we've got a lot of hunters that call and ask us on a regular basis, well, do, you know, do we supply the legs? No, we do not supply the legs. We figured uh, a lot of y'all are just like us. We have a boneyard full of tripod feeders. No, seriously, that's why we don't supply the legs. Another thing that's going to help you out in troubleshooting, we just recommend, is when you get your unit in, can you zoom in, Brian? Make sure your wing nuts on each side of the unit are good and tight. We do put Loctite on them. We also put Loctite on the set screw, which is on the bushing. But just for, you know, just in case, check it with your fingers. Also, your spinner here, look down the bottom here and just make sure it's level with the bottom. And you're good. To go. Couple things y'all need to know. Uh, couple more questions we get asked is, what all can we feed out of this? Or from what we know you can feed is of course corn, soybeans, protein, fish food, uh, dirty corn, uh, but we haven't, oh, peas, peas too. We've got hunters that are throwing peas out of this. Uh, we've got a guy right now, I believe in Alabama, who bought a couple of these that uh, is doing the peanuts, and he's, he's checking on that for us right now. Uh, the only thing that we know that this will not throw is like the molasses food. The, 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 it, it gums up the machine. It needs to free fall. If it free falls, it's gonna throw it out. 